You are such a good dog. Boss. Good morning, everybody. The show starting in just a couple minutes. I'm feeling much better. Thank you for asking. Ah, it's Sunday. Good morning. I got the music on in the background a little bit. We got people signed up. Cooper Cooper. Good morning. Tim 420. Ted D. Bear. Ted D. Bear. Mm. Fat Reefer. Semit. Semit. I haven't been able to say thank you or good morning or thank you for being so fucking funny. Sorry about that. Usually I give you props for being so fucking funny, but I haven't been feeling well lately. Um, Big Rob, Angel Studios, Dastardly Squad. What's up, boy? Good to see you, Albert, Nikos, Morning the Boss, Dat Nigga Nasty 55. Oh, somebody tricked me into saying it. Damn it. Gah. All right. Well, you got me there, Dat Nasty. <clears throat> Semit, Poppy Chulo, Striker. What do I think about them bud trimming machines? I think if you can't get your girlfriend to do it because you're growing so much dope, you need a bud trimming machine. Budley, good morning. Matey, Bubba Medic. Oh, this guy's Bubba Medic's local. Ah. Hitting the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Oh, yeah. What's up there, buddy? Powered all the... Powered all the... Angel Studios? I don't know if that says power to all the whites power. I, I don't know what that is, but that's inappropriate if it is, if that's what it says. Semit, ah, I'm feeling much better today. Thank you. Javier Garcia. Garcia. Buenos tardes. And fume poco mota. <coughs> ah, Richard, I saw that you left a comment yesterday in the video that said your fem seeds turned Hermie on me. I don't know why you keep telling us about that. It's not a question. None of us care. So, you know, you should always... Uh, Look up her dress before you take them home. Um, done and done. Wife own trim. Yeah, I'm telling you. What's the two complaints good growers have? Wife own trim. Plants got too big for the light. Yeah, totally. You need a butt. If you're going to be trimming for three weeks, man, you need you need a machine. I'm watching football and the grow boss at the same time. Wow, is it hard? Right, especially if you're going to take a knee. 
I'll tell you the biggest problem with taking a knee. You want to know the biggest problem with taking a knee before we get the show started? We'll do a little politics. I'll tell you the biggest problem with taking a knee. Why hasn't anybody addressed the issue? We know what they're complaining about. We know what the African-American, um, we know what the, all the ball players are playing about and the mistreatment. So why is everybody grinding on what they're doing? Why isn't everybody sitting down and saying, hey, we'd like to hear what you have to say. And we have a couple of complaints too. Because, you know, frankly, there is a Martin Luther King and 8th Street in every city, in every state. And it's fucking astounding how the same people have the same problems in every city and every state. I would love to hear what the people taking a knee want to tell us all about. I think they're right. I think, I think the rest of society, not just Caucasian. I think the rest of society and the money that we spend incarcerating certain types of people in certain um, in certain races across the board, I'm tired of incarcerating everybody too. So I would love to hear what you have to say. And as soon as you're done, we've got a list of demands too. So yeah, totally. I, it's the same thing with drugs, man. Don't care what race you are. I would first, second thing I would do would be make all drugs legal. Fuck that. You could make Coke, crack, free base, LSD, heroin, Vicodin. You can make it all legal. I wouldn't do them anymore. So why are we spending so much money? You know what I mean? There just comes that point where we're fighting battles. We just shouldn't be fighting. UK! Done and done. Let's see. Been trimming for three weeks. Let our people grow. New York John. That left a lot to the imagination. I trim in my sleep. Ah, like when you come back from the beach and you're still moving like the waves. Oh, hell yeah. <sighs> Seeds don't turn hermy, plants do. Mm. Well, the number's 84 Grow Boss. I'm feeling good. Show's off to a couple minute early start. Um, no, Sin City never called into the show. <laughs> but then with an 85% failure rate, I'll tell you what the problem with watching the grow boss is. Oh my God. I hate referring to myself in the th third person. The grow boss, the grow boss says, the grow boss does, the grow boss says to do. I'll tell you what the problem with uh, list watching my show is. If you want to be the man, if you want to be the smartest guy in the room, if you want to think that you know everything and that you're the best grower, you can't watch my show because you would have to let go. You would have to put faith in someone else. You would have to admit that growing cannabis is not mythical. You're not going to find a spiritual, your spiritual animal by growing it. You're not going to find out anything about yourself in a good way by growing cannabis. You're not going to discover something no one else has discovered. You're not uh, going to win. There are very few people that win growing cannabis. 770, hang on one sec for me. So this is the problem with watching the grow boss. Because I lay it on the line, and because I don't hide the facts, and because I tell you the truth about growing cannabis, and because I tell you what's a lie, and what's poor information, and what the correct information is, and because I'm right, you can't watch my channel or my videos if you want to be right. Because the reality is, I'm right. But... I didn't discover anything. I didn't create the path. I'm merely reporting on how to get there. I'm merely taking all of the data available to our industry, coordinating it and, and putting it forth in such a way, collating it and creating the charts and the information necessary for you to interpret the data. I, I, I don't tell you how to grow. There are lots of ways to grow. There are very few ways to be successful. That's the thing. If you want to be successful, you have to do what successful people and the things that you want to do, do. And so, yeah, I'm just saying I was, I, I was, I was on an ambulance as that EMTI for quite a while. And we got a ride along for a few hours one time. And I was working with a 30 year medic. He was one of the top medics. He was fan fucking tastic. And he taught, I mean, he was a teacher, not quite like me, but he was a teacher. And then we got this ride along. 
he was just on for a couple of hours, sat in the back, just helped out, had to finish his shift. I learned more from that dude in two hours about how to do the job. Like the way he cleaned the rig and the way he, when we got back to station and we had to clean, do our paperwork to go home, he hopped out of the back of that rig and it was clean. He had the equipment on his back to drop off over at supply. <clears throat> I had never seen anything like it. Nobody had demonstrated to me. I think his name was Robert. Nobody had demonstrated to me what a good EMT, what a spectacular EMTI looks like. Because it's not just about showing up and knowing if I should do CPR or bag him or which drugs to give. Part of the job is washing the rig. There are a lot of fucking details to the job. And you got to get them all right if you want to be fantastic at this. You don't get to do what you want to do when you want to do it because you want it. That's not how this works. Why do you think guys are the worst growers? Because guys do what they want to do. We don't have any concept of empathy or, or uh, you know what I mean? We don't have any concept of uh, um, thinking about somebody else or what the plant wants. I want it and I want it now. We're going to do it right now no matter what the consequences. That's what guys do. I mean, that's what guys do. I mean, how many chicks do you see drag racing? You know what I mean? Like, how many chicks do you see take bank robberies? How many chicks do you see, uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, of huge corporations inventing inventing ideas. And not to say that they don't. I'm just saying that when we look at the top corporations, I mean, you know, you look at the Yahoo one and you look at Thermos and you go, okay, there's two females. And then, like, all the rest are Bezos, Musk, um, um, Microsoft, Wozniak, you know what I mean? Jobs. And so listen, males, females, all different races. Not everybody is the same, nor do we want them to be the same. We don't want that. But what we also don't do is tap into the resources the way that we have them. We don't even use our resources properly. How can we win if we're fighting crime and we don't use our resources properly? It's the same thing with growers. How can you win if you're not doing the right things and thinking the right things? You got to be in the right mindset to be a good grower. It's brutal. All right. All right. Before I, 770, good morning. What can I do for you? Morning, girl boss. Got two questions. So, A, okay. um, I, I realize that we have a bunch of technology for, you know, growing, starting to grow and all that stuff, but usually for curing and drying, it's the same thing. Put it on the rack, put it in a jar. Is there anything that is either better, more efficient, or is it still just the same old classic jar and rack? Okay, let's let's do this in one of two ways. Let's say that there is something better. So we've been smoking pot and curing it and having a gangster, you know, this gangster industry for 40 years, for 40 years. And first I'd like to say, I don't know what you think new technology is in the market. I mean, you opened with, oh, there's new technology for growing, but I don't think there is. I mean, I think there are more products on the market and they differ, but I don't think there's, so in a moment, I'm going to ask you what you think new technology is. But before we do that, let's be clear. This has been going on for 40 years. So let's say there is a better way. What do you think that better way would do? Would it increase the THC? Would it make the buds way more? Would it make the buds way less? What do you think a different, albeit better, what do you think curing the bud differently is going to get you? Let's just say there is a better way. What do you think is going to happen? It would either increase, sorry, it would either decrease the time it took to properly cure it or somehow, well, no, yeah, it would, it would just be a time thing. So it, it would be the same result, but in less time. Okay, I'm sorry, you said decrease time. Or, or, or a larger. Decrease time. What was the other benefit? either decrease time for the same result or okay. a somehow better cure, I guess. Okay. It's, it's, that, that, but, but that's what I'm asking. Like but that's what I'm asking you to define. You said better cure define better because I don't know what that means, sir. Sure. Okay. So, um, let's say you didn't cure it at all. So you just basically chopped the plant and you dried it for about two days, no jar, anything like that. That would be the worst case result of a bad cure. 
the best case result would be one that tastes properly, it isn't dry, um, it isn't completely like uh, dust, but it, it would be the best case scenario, and, and I guess that's subjective still, but I, I guess it would be the, the best case scenario of a proper cure in, in whatever the generalized term of a proper, proper cure would be, since there's, okay. since there's a bad cure. Okay, so we went from, you went from, I, I'm just trying to, in anything that I do, I mean, no disrespect here, in anything that I do, whether it be helping growers in the store or answering questions, the first thing that we have to do is take the objective out. You, sir, said better. So what I asked you to do is define on a scale of one to 10, best to worst, uh, worst to best. You said dry, fast, and smoke. What I hear is like microwave. Okay, so the worst cure, microwave. The best cure is it tastes good and smokes good. Okay, it's smokable. It's the right dryness. It doesn't turn to dust. Okay, have you, have you, ever, have you ever had bud that smelled good and smoked good? Yes. Okay, so let's just, I'm just pointing out that currently the current system creates your definition of a 10, your de definition of a 10 was it smells good, tastes good, smokable. And you have had bud that smells good, tastes good, and smokable with the current method without using any new technology. Okay, so current technology, satisfactory. So what you've asked for is better. Okay, let, so far the only thing that I have heard you define better as is in decreased time, same result. So is there something else that you're looking for? Because frankly, tastes good, smells good, and is smokable. I mean, we've been doing that for a long time. So you're saying you want yeah. a better cure, but so far you've only defined better as shorter, as a shorter time frame. So do you have anything else that you'd like to define as better? Quite honestly, no. And, and, and I'm just asking the question because, I, it, well, I, no is, is a short answer. The, the slightly longer one would be that I'm not necessarily looking for anything, but I figure with the technology we have, such as like uh, what they call trimming machines or LED lights or… But, no, but you asked me cure. Anything that we can, but you said cure. Right, right. And, and, and I'm just saying with, with that technology, I, my only question is, is there anything similar? But, yeah, the, the only difference you can make out of a 10 out of 10 that's dry, smoked, you know, and it tastes well is speed at that point. There's no other category that you can look at. I concur, and that's why when people keep telling me that they spend huge money on LED lights, I go, what? For what? Why, are you, why aren't you building the cheapest grow you can instead of the most expensive grow you can? Why? Because the results are always the same. So I, I see – now, the first part of your question was – it was – the was is there anything we can do to get a better harvest so i'm just trying to I, I know you're asking like you know this innocent and 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 groovy kind of a question but from my perspective i don't know how to i don't know how to answer it because frankly if i did answer it it would show my own ignorance because your definition of better is faster time the next caller's definition of better he might be selling it by weight yeah. he might want it to is there any better way to cure it and i mean like a spray that makes it look more crystally and way more so here's a guy who wants it to weigh more you're a guy who wants to decrease time you know the next guy may want more thc or cbd what i'm suggesting is um frankly none of those things have to do with the cure because the next thing you brought up was the at, toward the end of this was the fact that you started to go back to the grow you left the cure you started talking about the grow leds stuff like this listen i'll tell you the biggest the second biggest lie perpetrated on the industry has been leds i mean how many years are, are people going to say oh man leds are almost there listen the leds today at 1500 bucks, if they're not there, you're four times as fucking stupid if you buy one. Why? Because if it's not there and they're not there yet, why are you spending $1,500 on a light that isn't going to grow any bud different than any other light that's 80% cheaper when you can't even do anything about the cure? Listen, I appreciate the call. Thank you. Um, I will tell you one more thing about curing and growing and it's all relative because they have this video about making sake on netflix um um 
and and the cure um so they have this video about making uh sake this guy's been doing it for 53 years and basically his comment was and they have to like live at this facility for like six months out of the year and they have to process rice they harvest it they hey 313 give me a sec so <clears throat> it, it, it's this process that takes months and months and months to make sake and every time they bring on a new apprentice it's always the same thing the apprentice the new kid he tries to speed up the process it turns out that the rice has to be evenly dehydrated, evenly. And you can speed up the process if the room is warmer or if you turn it more, or there are ways to speed up the process. But what happens is you remove the evenly and the evenly, that one detail about the whole grain of rice being dehydrated within 1% of itself, within less than 1% of its target, that it turns out is everything going forward. So in all cases, I, I always, it boggles my mind when you say what's better, but you haven't determined any kind of scale to rate it on. And this is not just curing. I mean, you come in and say, what's the better nutrient? The fuck? I, better in terms of what you have to buy 55 gallons because you're a facility better in terms of you have a 400 watt light so you don't need a pint better in terms of your dumbass wants to use 19 products i mean nobody defines these terms and what i want to point out is like anything else and this was the same thing i wanted to bring up this morning with that football take a knee thing nobody's defined any terms better how better who better what better by and so when you start off with an ill-conceived vision and you don't understand the basics of how to ask questions and make decisions of how to diagnose problems if you don't understand those basic concept and you have a pie in the sky ill-conceived vision how can this ever work for you? Because unless you have, and that's why I'm brutal with you guys. That's why I, I just don't hide it. I don't try to conceal it from you. I lay it out there because frankly, even if you know the truth, you guys still, I, I don't know what it is like too much light, too much water, too many nutrients. So every time I get a call on my hotline, somebody says, grow boss, I do what, just what you say. I don't over water. And I go, what about everything else? Why are you selectively deaf? Why don't you, why do you require asking the questions? Why don't you see what I'm talking about, read the words and comprehend it? Because you still need that, that the teacher still needs to um, um, integrate. See, when you go to school, you're actually supposed to read the book, do the work, and then ask questions when you go to school. The teacher gives you the idea. You've already read the book, so it's not the first time you've heard it. Now the pieces get locked. You do the questions, and then you come back where, you're, where you have holes. That's not how the school system works. But that's how education works, is you go home, you do it, and then you present your questions. So I, I'm just saying, right, knowing, last name change, knowing and accepting are not the same thing. And selective deafness is a problem. Like, we know what the football protests are about. We could, as a group, we could fix this quickly. I mean, we can send a cruise missile anywhere in the world. I'm sure we could fix this problem inside the United States. So I'm just saying that knowing and accepting are different, just like experience and experimenting are different. There is no reason for anybody to experiment growing cannabis anymore. If LEDs aren't here, the fuck do you think changes? Kind LED, brilliant fucking LEDs, right? They've got 12 bands. I mean, they're 1500 bucks. If 12 bands and 1500 bucks aren't there yet, what, what the fuck is ever going to be there? You know, like the, the shit that you guys try to make valuable is over the top meaningless. And so when you say things like new technology or try to speed it up, I just always refer you to the Saki video where there's nothing you can do, but do the damn thing. 
Turn off your brain. Stop thinking about it. Leave it the fuck alone and do the right thing. That's how you grow cannabis. And it's just like anything else in life. There are some things that you can, a problem with a car, you can fix. A problem with a relationship takes time. It takes trust. You got to build things. It takes 10 times longer to fix it if you break it. And eventually you stop breaking things so you don't have to fix them. Oh my God. When you stop breaking things so you don't have to fix them, I guess that's figure out how to do it and leave it the fuck alone. There isn't that much to do. So all I'm suggesting is that growing cannabis is not about growing cannabis. It's about leave it the fuck alone and let it grow itself. That's why when you come to my store and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to be a botanist. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to learn all this. I go, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like you drive a car, but you don't go to school to be an engineer. All I'm suggesting is that most of the people that come through my store don't have four year degrees. So we're already pulling from the low end of the pool. And so when you pull from the low end of the pool and then you combine it with pie in the sky visions that have very little to do based on the reality of the situation, we should expect the whole thing to turn out like a disaster. This whole thing, how could it possibly turn out any way other than a disaster if you were never on the trajectory of success? All right, 313, good morning. Hey, good morning, Grow Boss. How are you today? I am feeling good, dude. Apparently, I am on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love your show, man. You do a Thank great you. job. Thank but you, I my friend. I want to pick your brain one okay. more time. I'm, um, I have a 2,000-watt flower room that's 10 by 10, and then I have a bedroom that's 1,000 watt. And I want to add a dual arc bowl into my flower room for my last two, three weeks of flower. Now, if I add a 600, does that mean that I have to turn my bedroom into 1300 <coughs> watts to match? If you the add, if you, that'll be in. if you add the 600, but you don't dim one of the thousands, then yes, sir. That's, that's what that would mean. It would mean that if you increase total light and flower, now let's say you had a fast strain and you had enough canopy to handle the extra light. Yeah, then you could turn it on. Now, when you say, oh shit, I thought I had some dual arcs that I could show you what a dual arc is. I'm looking around my store for a dual arc. Hang on, give me one sec. Um, not everybody knows what a dual arc bulb is. Um, ah, you know, in, in 10 years of doing this, I've sold four dual arcs and two of them were about a month ago because, okay. So here's Ushio and here is, um, okay. well, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I do want to introduce that into my flower room. Um, okay. Just for the, like the last two, three weeks. Cause I heard that, you know, that, that blue light will help bring out, you know, the colors because I'm growing some purple colors and some red colors and I'm, I'm going to enhance them. Okay. Have you heard anybody tell you that, that a product called purple max? So I'm just, just out of curiosity, cause I, I got a, no. I got a question for you. Okay. So hang on. So have you heard anybody tell you that, um, turning the temperatures down would turn it purple? Yes. I okay. Have some blue and some purple, and when I get my last two, three weeks, I try to get my temperature down to around sixty, and that that helps. Okay. But I know, you know, I kind of wanted to see what that dual arc could do as well. Okay. So what we're talking about in terms of a dual arc is, um, let me. I'm gonna. I just want to catch everybody up because. Not everybody knows what a dual arc looks like. So let me pull this up on the internet so we all know what I'm talking about. We'll do a quick catch they are up. Expensive. <laughs> well, essentially you're buying two bulbs. I, I don't think it's any more expensive than buying two yes. bulbs. Okay. Yes, you are. You just getting two bulbs in one. Right. Okay, so here here is a dual arc bulb. See, there is this long, thin one here, and then there's this shorty, fat one right here. Now, 
How that translates into what we do is this. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know it drives you guys crazy. Watch me touch the bulb. <laughs> Listen, Bolt, you can touch the bulb all you want. The thing that you got to do before you use any bulb is you hold it with a paper towel and you wipe it down with a paper towel with Windex on it. So you hold it with a paper towel while you wipe it down with a paper towel. And the reason is your fingers oh, yeah, have to... Hey, no, no. Hang on a sec. First off, turn your, turn your computer down so you don't hear me in the background. And two, give me a sec because I'm catching everybody else up to your question. So hang on a sec. So here is an HPS bulb. Now... The fingers, or your oil on your fingers when you touch the bulb, they heat and cool differently, like an aluminum head on a cast iron block. You, it's just not the same thing as aluminum, aluminum, cast iron, cast iron. The, the oils heat and cool differently, and that develops cycling, and you get cracks in your bulb. Now, the difference in these two bulbs, as you can see, is that this, <clears throat> this one has that short fatty in the middle and this one has that long thin one in the middle so these are your two choices now this is both of these bulbs are hid bulbs they are both high intensity discharge bulbs this is an mh it stands for metal halide metal halide produces numbers that are higher in the spectrum like 4000 6000 7000 kelvin now these are wavelengths blue in the sky red for flower and specifically um i will i want to show you this colors of ushio and so specifically what we're talking about here is uh when you watch this video that i made hey i know that guy look at how red that is and look at how blue that is and later in the video what i'm comparing is this is a not ushio bulb and that is an ushio not ushio ushio and look at how much more blue and how much more red these these colors are especially so this is my super scientific experiment i made these sunglasses that's just a piece of paper but look at the difference in that and so what this caller is talking about is the difference in those spectrums, the difference between the red and the blue. And again, blue veg, like 4,000, 5, 6,000 Kelvin, blue, blue. And this is red in the orange spectrum. So the plants, when the sun, and this is the big deal, what happens is the sun takes an arc that's high in the sky during the spring and summer. And the higher the sun is, the more blue the days are because the amount of atmosphere that, <coughs> the amount of atmosphere that, I mean, if you just look at this from a mathematical perspective, the amount of atmosphere that if you, if the sun is here, um, if the sun, okay, so our two choices are the sun is here and the sun is here. Uh, if we take a look at the atmosphere that's like <laughs> this, um, ah, it's not round, but it's supposed to be round. If we take a look at the atmosphere, it turns out that the light has to travel a greater distance in the atmosphere um, when we do from here to here versus from here to here. So these two distances, um, you can see how much longer this distance is over here. So traveling through the atmosphere is a big deal in terms of wavelength the longer it travels through the atmosphere the wavelength the, the the more of the blue gets eliminated and this is exactly what we see with the harvest moon it's low on the horizon with lots of light travel through the atmosphere so what we're talking about and i know i'm getting a little scientific for your call but i promise i'll get back to your call so no we, no you're 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 great Okay, so what we're talking about here, and this is all in the grow book too. What we're talking about here is, a, is to some extent seasonality. And when the sun's high in the sky, this is 16 hours worth of light, you know, 14. The sun's low in the sky. We get less light as there's less of an arc to travel over. That's why when everybody says, oh my God, I want wavelengths just like the sun or the LED manufacturers say, our LEDs most closely mimic the sun. 
Listen, first off, outdoor weed's worth half indoor weed. So let's just start there. Second off, if you wanted to mimic the sun, that's not the max bud you're going to get. Max bud you're going to get is not based on sun. Now, what they also talk about is different wavelengths and the par of the light, the photoactive radiation. And I hate getting into lumens and I hate getting into par, but I'll tell you that the plants use different lumens sorry, different wavelengths at different times in different amounts. Now they always want all wavelengths, but at certain times, wavelengths trigger certain reactions. They trigger fall, they trigger spring. There are certain things that happen with wavelengths. So there's a lot, three, three, six, I'll get back to you in a sec. Give me a call in a couple minutes. And so these are the, these, there are different wavelengths and different wavelengths trigger different things to happen. Like when you cook in a microwave, you cook with microwaves. You don't cook with ultraviolet waves. The blue ultraviolet is here at this end of the spectrum and the red microwaves are down here. I mean, they don't go through mountains the same way. There's line of sight, like, uh, you know, like terrestrial radio. And then there's satellite radio. You know, there it's, Information can travel in different ways. A radio station broadcasts a signal that everybody can pick up. A computer broadcasts a signal with an IP address meant for one computer. So these are many similar things, but handled in many different ways. And when we talk about spectrum, I just want to point out that you can flower with a blue light and you can veg with a red light. And then when we look at um, okay, so let's come back to here and then we'll take a look at this picture. Okay, so this is a Hortolux bulb. And when we look at this, we see that there's lots of yellow. Oh, this is the dual arc. There's lots of blue, not as much. And okay, I just, whenever, whenever this, uh, nonsense, go, uh, oh, whenever this nonsense, uh, rings i'm always afraid um that the um i'm always afraid that my mic's off <laughs> so hang on a sec um let me just make sure that okay all right <clears throat> so we're looking at this spectrum here and what we're talking about is this relationship of how much of what color now i already tell you guys that there's too much light going on you guys, most of your shit, we talked about that yesterday when we were looking at those NPK University um, with Harley uh, with Harley and his opinion about, now, you know, his opinions were right. I mean, his facts were right. We were talking about Harley and, and the different problems that the different micronutrients, in terms of, he was all wrong in terms of boots on the ground. So I just want to point out again that, hang on. Hang on. The construction guy is here. I know. I know. You're such a good dog. Hang on a sec. I got to let the construction guy in. Hi. I'm on. I'm doing my webcast. No rush. No rush, dude. It's a free show. Fuck him. <laughs> okay. Ralph, stop. So... So we're talking about spectrum, and now what we're talking about is the amount of each spectrum. So let's say that plants can absorb X amount of whatever spectrum. The question is, if you're using this, if you're using this light, how much more does this little bit of blue matter? Now, when you look at this bulb, this is a thousand watt bulb. It is a 600 HPS, 400 MH. So you are adding a 400 watt MH to it. And this is the same thing. This is the same argument I make for LEDs. I believe that UVA and UVB may very well affect THC and CBD and whatever else the fuck you think it affects. It may very well improve it. But do you have to buy a $1,500 LED to do that? Or can you take a thousand watt HPS bulb for $200 and buy a $200 LED that has all those wavelengths and add a, and add like a hundred watt LED to a thousand watt HPS. What I'm asking here is what is it worth? Because here on this dual arc, they're throwing down a 400 with a six HPS. Could you do a 200 instead of a four? Now you, sir, are adding a 600. So you have a thousand watt 
red. So you're going to add a 600 watt blue. So you'll have 1600 watts total. Okay, so 600 on 16 is almost one third. 400 on 1000 is almost one third. So you have about the same ratio. 10 to 6 is, um, is uh, 10 to 6 is 6 to 4. So I'm just suggesting that 60%, you're still in the same range, 60%, 66%. So it's still the same amount. My question is, okay. what do you think this is worth? Because if you were just to add another 600 watt HPS bulb, if you added 600 watts worth of light, you're going to add a pound to the yield provided you have enough canopy. The question is, if you add a 600 watt light and get a pound HPS, then what do you think if you add a 600 watt MH is going to get you? Um, I mean, is it going to increase the bud? Because other people have done this before, right? And, and they make a bulb that's, that's made for what you're talking about. So, you know, here's all the data. I don't understand what you think you're going, I mean, I know you said it was color back in the beginning and I can't answer that for you. You will of course have to experiment on your plant. But what we're talking about here is, is, is what really like, I, I mean, do you think you're going to, do you think it's going to be purple that you've never seen? Because other people grow purple strains with these bulbs. They don't sell very many of these bulbs. Usually it's, to, usually it's a hopes and dreams kind of a thing, but I, I, I see what you're going oh, for. Okay. I see what you're going for. I don't have an answer whether it's going to work or not because, I, I mean, you would have to experiment. Well, you pretty much answered it. So what you, did you, you... You pretty much answered it. What did you take I away? I, I mean, I pretty much came to the conclusion I don't really need it. I mean, if I'm going to add another bulb, I might as well get that pound instead of trying to get that extra color because I'm not getting the dense purple that I should get or the, the beautiful blue and the red that I should get. Well, maybe I need to drop my temperatures a little bit more. No, but no, if I can not add... No. Um, listen, if you were to add a 600 watt MH, you're going to get another pound. If you were to add a 600 watt HPS, you would get another pound. The amount of light that you're going to get is about the same. The spectrum changes. Might it alter the bud? Yeah, it might. I mean, I mean, it could alter it. It could alter it in a good way. It could alter it in a bad way, or maybe not alter it at all. Two out of the three scenarios oh, no, have. It's not worth it. So, <laughs> let's address. Now that we have that, let's take. Let's go back and let's look at what your system is. Now, you said you had a thousand watt light and flower. Tell me again what you have. No, I have a thousand in veg and two thousand watt and flower. Okay. But I was only going to use the dual arc just for the last two weeks, two, maybe three weeks of flower weeks, like okay. seven, eight, nine. I would say that if you were going to use a dual arc rather than buying a dual arc, you could literally buy a 600 watt HPS and hang it on the wall and aim it over the canopy. You know what I mean? You could put it off to the side. You could move it back and forth on a light mover and you could use six. I have, I have mine on light mover. So what you would do is you would just throw another hood up there or you would, you don't need to switch out the bulb per se. You could try, uh, you know what I mean? All you have to do is include that spectrum. You could buy a bulb ballast hood and hang it on one side and shine it over the whole canopy. I don't think that you have to go out necessarily and buy a dual arc bulb. Great idea. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like if you're looking for that, um, yes. you could do it like that too, but you got 2000 on flower in a light mover on a light mover. So tell me about your AC. How are you cooling this? Two duck, two duck AC. Brilliant. Tell me about your CO2. Uh, 50 pound tank. Oh, you must be a young man, my oh. friend. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm up there, almost fifty. <laughs> oh my! Watch your videos when I first started to grow. When I started buying all my equipment and said, "This is the route that I'm going to take to medicate myself and stop dealing with the doctors and and all the rough. I just grow my own medication and 
because of watching your videos, I knew everything to buy and every step to take. I knew how I wanted my rooms, what equipment I could afford to buy. I didn't have to go buy a whole bunch of stuff, like you said, that you don't need. And then you're buying all the stuff that people buy that they don't need. You're buying it back because I don't know <laughs> what the hell they're doing. So thanks to you, I'm, I'm, I've had no problems, none, no bugs. No mishaps. It's just been nice. I'm almost. Uh, this is my fifth row, so. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. So, I, I, I thank you a lot. Thank okay. you a lot. I appreciate that. You, um, the 50 pounders. I usually make that young man joke because they are so fucking heavy. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so you, it is. It's not. It's not that heavy, no. When it's full, but it, it, it can get heavy. It's so heavy. Okay. All right, strong guy. So you've got a 50-pound CO2 in flour, 2,000 watts on a light mover. You should be at about two two pounds, a little more than two pounds per light, per light. What are um, you getting? Yeah. Well, I'm averaging about four and a half every harvest. That's dry. Dude, you're, so you're getting well, two and a couple of them I have. I have uh, – that wasn't that wasn't right. I had a couple that just won't the strand I'm getting rid of it, it just won't produce that cold as fuck. <coughs> so but I get about out of my I have a ten by ten room and out of that ten by ten room and then two lights I'm getting four, four and a half pounds. So I'm I'm pretty much on pace. It should be a I could probably get a little more. That's why I was thinking about adding another light. Because I still have a lot of room in <coughs> my room. To add, I just don't because of equipment and when you water and if you got your whole room full of plants, you got no room to move around. So I like to let them breathe, stretch out a bit. That's right, because too many but, parking I mean, spots in a parking lot and suddenly the, car, the people can't get in and out of their cars. Your girls can't flourish if yeah. they don't have the space. That's what I've been telling you guys all along. Listen, you're getting four and a half pounds. That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, well, yeah. thank you. I mean, let's just all stop right there. And I just want to point out that that here's a guy who's getting the weight. It's his fifth grow. He's where he's supposed to be. He's got a couple of more details to dial in. But he's not adding 600 watts worth of blue light until he got everything he was supposed to get from the money he already spent. So, again... Fist bump. Now, let me ask you, when you talk about your bud, you said you were looking for more color and density. I mean, listen, I've got a good grower on the phone. You and I might as well hang out for a minute. So tell me what your bud looks like when it finishes. Is it dense? Is it sticky? Does it smell good? It's, yes, yes. It's, well, I had, when I first started, it was my mishaps. I didn't know. The bulbs, I bought, you know, cheap bulbs because the first, when you're first setting up, you kind of budget it. So as I learned to get with better bulbs, light, like you said, is very important. You know, you, you need the good light in order to get your bulbs dense and real sticky. But the stickiness comes from the strand. It's not what you as the grower do to bring out more stickiness. If you don't have a strand that's going to give you resin, there's nothing you can do as a grower to give it resin from what I've learned and what you've been saying and other people have been saying, I just don't see it happening. But, All you can do is properly grow the plant and see how she turns out. Might you have to top and lollipop to shape her and direct her? Yes, but you're never, I mean, people always yeah. talk about genetics, but genetics don't matter until you don't fuck up for 12 weeks. Because if you screw up, the genetics didn't matter. The grower screwed the pooch, right? The grower, yeah. Right. Yes. So I think that's great. So you're getting the weight you're supposed to. You're getting the smell and the quality you're supposed to. I think that it may not be a bad idea to, I mean, you said you're in a 10 by 10 room and you have two, you have, let, I'm going to, um, I'm, I want to, uh, I want to uh, draw your example. I'm going to take a second, draw, draw your example here. So you said you had a, a 10 by 10 room with two light movers on them, right? Oh, it went two lights on one light move. 
I have two, well, yeah, two light movers. You have two have light movers with one, one row. I have no, I have one light mover, but I have it. I had kind of rigged it so it'll fit both lights will fit. So it doesn't move much because my two lights they pretty much cover that whole space. <clears throat> okay. Anyway. When you say you rig something, let me ask you. Usually when you usually they come in a row one after the other. Did you rig something so it's like left to right instead of front to back? No, I put it on a longer piece of wood and attached it to the ceiling so, you know, to give it extra support. Okay, so you're actually so no, I got a I, lot of fan movement. No, no. I, I, um no, what I meant was are you using two lights in the in half the room, or does each light have its own five by ten space? No, they're they're side by side. They side by side. It's five by five space. Yes, each light has a five by five space. Okay, room. okay, I, I I understand. I understand what you're you're going for. So I'm drawing this. I, I just want to take a sec to draw this up. Um, are are you watching the show too? Yes. Okay. So I'm a little bit behind. So. That, okay, I I got you. It's going to take me a sec to draw it anyway. Um, so uh, let's see. This is the divider. So you're growing in half of the room, right? Okay. Do you have two five by five tables? Is that how you're doing it, or are they all on the floor? No, they're all on the floor, and uh, I have a fluid tray. Okay. How many plants? Ten in each room. Um, ten in veg and ten in flower. You meant? No, I have ten in each flower. Oh. I have like twenty, twenty-five in, in veg. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Between Vidge and, and clones right now, kind of loaded. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That'll 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 eventually calm down too. So you got ten in each. Um, okay. I just I, I'm yeah, just I want about how I had it too. Yeah, I'm just trying to put this into perspective so we can all talk about this together because, because sir, I have some suggestions for you. And, and I think they might be good ones. So basically, you have 10 plants. You're getting four and a half pounds. And so you have this whole space to the right that's open, yes? Yes, that's where I walk in. I got okay. my AC, my tanks, my fans. You know, I have a dehumidifiers in there, so... And like I say, it gives me room to move around. I'll, you know, I can move my plants around, water them good. I don't do a trellis because once you go into a trellis, you can't move your plants. <coughs> I'll, I'll stake everything. I got them bent, and they all kind of ways. But you know, you go into a trellis, you're stuck. <laughs> you can't move them. <laughs> so now that's the only disadvantage about a trellis. Yes, sir. And especially when you have an eight week veg and you do a two light rotation. And even though you have three lights, because both of these lights start and stop at the same time, you essentially have a one light veg, a two light flower, but you have a two grow room rotation, not two lights per se, but yeah. a two area grow. So, I mean, this, yeah. so this is super smart. My, my, obser my, my, my observation to you would be no matter what light you added, I would say that you would, if you added a 600 watt light, if you increase the watts by 600 watts, um, I would say that that from your perspective, um, you again, you're adding one and a half pounds wet or a half pound dry. Sir, I would suggest that you would have to evaluate your situation and ask, could you put that much more weight? Because you've, you're really like sort of maxed out on the space. So your initial yeah, no, I can't, I can't. Right. So your initial question was if you added the six hundred if you added six hundred, would you have to dim one? Yes. I would like to say that fuck, I would say in your case, dude, buy yourself buy yourself and you don't usually hear me say this. I don't even let's 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 figure out dual arc let's figure out what this is dual arc let's just find it on ebay and you should always shop local um dual arc 
Hordelux always shop local. Dulux Hordelux bulb. <clears throat> Best match, lowest price. Dual arc. Nope, that's not. Oh, there we go. One hundred and and fifty buck. One hundred and fifty-five bucks, sir. I would like to suggest that you order this bulb. I would don't just put this bulb. Swap it for one of them, sir. You're doing so good. You deserve it. So you're saying take one of my HPSs out and put in a dual arc and leave it at two lights. Yeah. Oh I would, God, for real? I, I would say you deserve it. Listen, you're getting you're getting two and a quarter pounds of light. <laughs> ah, dude, you're getting two and a quarter pounds of light. Um, you know, let me ask you something. Do you think you could get three pounds from one of your lights? Do you think you? I mean, right now you've got a light I'm mover. Trying. I'm I'm trying, but with that you have to take you have to veg. I I was vegging the mother plant for about nine months, and I was gonna do that with double ended bulbs to see if I can get three pounds from one plant from one light from one plant. That's my goal. You have well not from one plant have a a pound and a half dry from one plant with one light, but I think you gotta veg. 10, 11 months. I think you have to get her really, really big. You would, you would probably if you're have indoors. to. Outdoors, you can do it all day, but right indoors, you you got to veg. You got it's a lot of work. It's a four month veg. It's a lot of but weight. That's my goal. It's not a lot of work. It's a lot of weight. No, I'll tell you why that's not your goal. You've fallen out of the parameters of efficient operation. Now, I believe that you could have fewer plants and maybe get them a little bigger, but. Beyond that, sir, I have I have no way to improve upon this for you. I don't believe you're going to get three from a light. I was just making that joke because there's a book out there called Three a Light. But I want to point out that three here's a, light, a guy. Yes. There's a here's a guy. I want to point out to everybody else that here's a guy who's knocking it out of the park. His biggest problem is trying to get it more purple because everything's so good. Have you heard anybody? Call this show like that with a problem that I'm doing so fucking good. The biggest complaint I have is I want them more purple. So here's a guy who right, actually you. <laughs> here's a guy who actually deserves to go out and spend the money on a dual arc bulb. Sir, I, I, you congratulations. Like at this point, enjoy yourself. Don't don't think this is ever going to be anything more. I mean, you own a dehumidifier, AC, CO2, two duct AC, on the ground, in media, thousand watt lights, light movers. And you know what I mean? And you're looking for more purple. You're not even looking for more weight. You're just looking for more purple. No, you're going after bag appeal. Well, yeah. Because you're getting the weight one, you're supposed one, to. One grow I didn't get, but maybe two, two and a half pounds out of it. That's because my bulbs, I didn't know. But once I got new bulbs, it's, it took right back off. But the bulbs are very, very important. Not the cheap bulbs. You can grow with them. But you don't want the cheap bulbs. I've, I've learned over my grows. <laughs> I've been growing almost two years now. And, and you, need, you need good bulbs. Yeah. That's that's the bulb. That nice. Porter Lux bulb is, is 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 the best bulb on the market, not the Ushio, in my opinion. <laughs> but, you know, it's BMW you know, Mercedes. Put a dual arc in. It's BMW Mercedes. Uh, and and listen, I will tell you that if you want to take a picture of your garden. If you want to run an Ushio next to a Hortolux of the 1,000 watt and show us, if you want to make us a video, I will hook you up with store credit and ship you stuff out if you want to make a video for me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Hey, I was thinking about that when you were talking about doing your uh, your your show in the office. Cannabis Information I Network, was, yeah. That's actually on my mind, yeah. But, you know, once everything is... is once we can really stick our heads out and, and show the world that we're okay. <laughs>
You don't need but to be yeah, in it. I, that's something I plan on doing. You don't. All right, okay. listen. I appreciate yeah, the call. I listen. I appreciate the call. Listen. You don't need to be in the video to send me the video, and you know BMW, Mercedes. There comes this point where, you know, how much quality is quality? Like, you know, what is the difference? You know, like. $80,000 Mercedes, $400,000 Rolls Royce. Is there, ah, listen, there comes this point where 10,000 square foot house, 20,000 square foot house, there comes this point where you can't live in the property. You know what I mean? There comes this time where you just got more than you need. All right. I keep waiting for, we were, I was waiting to finish that up. I, I just want to point out to you guys that, you know, when I talk about the problems good growers have, they're not the problems that growers that come into the store asking, oh, hey, P Jammer, call me after the show. Um, I, I, want, I need some more help. Um, you know, when I talk about, like, the problems growers have, I, you either have to be a grower or own a store or something like this. Um, as soon as you argue with me, oh, what was this? I got, uh, what was this one? I got, uh, let's see, hang on, let me... I, <laughs> <clears throat> okay yes um okay here is you are supposed to add enzymes with regular feeding you make it sound like it's the same as h2o2 enzymes won't kill beneficial bacteria peroxide will you know do you know how peroxide works one of the H's break off and you get a free ion, just like ozone, one of the O's break off. The thing about peroxide is, is it lyses a cell. So if you have a damaged cell and the peroxide can interact with it, the H breaks off, the O breaks off, and it becomes an oxidizer. So it's an oxidizer, but on healthy cells, you can take 3% peroxide, wipe it on your arm. Now, you take 35% peroxide, melt the eyes out of your fucking head. That's why you don't ever store pH up or down or peroxide or any of those chemicals above your head. Why? Because if you take it down and there's a problem, you spill it on your face, melt the eyes out of your head. Don't ever store that stuff. Also, there's no reason to shake it. And if you do shake it, because you have to shake it because it's a habit, put your finger on the cap. These are just safety concerns. The last thing you need is a 35% drop of H2O2 landing on your eye, man. It'll put a spot on your eye for the rest of your life. So you, you gotta you gotta pay attention to that. Um, so in terms of peroxide, it lyses cells, but you gotta water it down to 3%, right? So at 3%, you could wipe it on your arm and it doesn't damage healthy cells. Now, what do enzymes do? An enzymatic reaction is a breakdown. They don't put H2O2 when they do composting, right? What happens? It's a microbial breakdown. And as the process of breaking down happens, it creates heat as a byproduct. That's how you know when it's done. The pile stops steaming, right? Okay, so when you say you are supposed to add enzymes with regular feeding, <clears throat> why do they tell you that when you reuse your dirt and you take the... Uh, why do I, you know, why do I hear, uh, I hate to use the word they when I bitch at other people about it for it. So why does the consensus seem to be when you take your plant out, you put the soil aside and add enzymes to break down the remaining roots and whatever's in there? I mean, you can also add microbes. You take some compost, add it to the compost before it, you know, like they do with bacteria for sourdough, yeast. Um, enzymes won't kill beneficial bacteria, peroxide will. So let me ask you, Will, is, is if you have a slimy root, is that, what is the slime on the root? I mean, think about it. What is the slime? Where did the slime come from? What happens is the outer layer of the root, just like your fingers in the jacuzzi, they become swollen and porous because the lining of the cell, um, as the cell expands, it becomes leaky, just like vascular structure. So the inside of the contents of the cell can get out and outside stuff comes in based on 
That's right, the salinity of the cell, because water always wants to balance it out. So based on the principle of osmosis, the size of the cell, then when the cells get damaged by too much water and they swell, the swell is the slime that comes off the root. If enzymes are part of the breakdown process and your roots are slimy and the microbes live on the roots, then the microbes are already dead. So what is the enzyme? My point is, if you're in hydro, if you're in soil, you have to treat both those differently. But here's jerky Maruka, tell, Marunka telling me, oh, here's just some blanket statement from jerky Maruna who's telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, he's got to be insulting me at some point, right? Because you make it sound like it's the same. I make it sound like they are clearly different and to be used in different circumstances with different conditions. I tell you NPK is the same. I tell you all nutrients come from the same shit. You know what I mean? Like there are different formulas of the same shit. I mean, oatmeal cookie is oatmeal cookie. You know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, you make statements like that. And I just want to point out that when you commit you don't leave yourself open for new information you've committed you're not fluid you're not um moving through um you're not uh growing is dynamic the plants change you change the situation changes the seasons change the light changes you know i had a guy come in here yesterday with several thousand watts worth of light and he wanted sample nutrients and I laughed in his face. I probably should have apologized, but I literally looked at the guy and laughed at him. I said, you have, you literally have 3000 Watts worth of electricity and you want to get samples. Like, why wouldn't you buy three gallons of Fox farm one part? some NPK, some powder, and learn one nutrient and how to use it so you don't ever have to think about it. I mean, you've got 3,000 watts worth of electricity. <clears throat> You're trying to save what? Huh? Oh, 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 the guy that, that fuck that came in yesterday who brought the butt in who didn't want to be on camera. Now, I knew this guy. And he always comes in and he comes in every once a month and he's always asking about his plants. And it's always the same thing. Like, I mean, the guy didn't buy his lights for me, but apparently I'm the guy that knows something and I treat him like shit. So he seems to like me. It's unfortunate because I treat him like that. So he doesn't come back. But I mean, there comes this point where you go to every hydro store and they all tell you it's pH lockout and they tell you this and they tell you that and they give you seven bottles. And what they don't tell you is back your light off, decrease the watering and stop feeding so much. And so he, they always migrate back here. So he guy comes in and he shows me his bud. And so I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on a sec. Um, are you using an LED? And he goes, yeah. I go, okay, we're done. I'll tell you the same thing I told you last time. Stop using an LED. And he wants to say something. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You read my book. I've heard what you have to say. I don't care that your plant is miniaturized from too much light. If you're using an LED for any one of a number of reasons, you have the second highest probability of failure tied with hydro. The only thing worse is if you're growing with LED and hydro. He's not growing. He's growing LED with media. So that's it. Just, uh, that's it. And so he goes, well, what do you think about this? And, th and I go, no, 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 no until you buy a light that that is on the trajectory of success until you buy that light and more importantly this is the fifth or sixth time we've had this discussion so i'm really not interested in any of your opinions or anything like that i'm like i'm pretty clear i'm not going to change my opinion so there's no reason for you to ever ask me again which is why i talk to you this way because this is what i told you last time you have to buy equipment that works for what you're doing. You can't be in a five foot tall closet with a 600 watt LED. If the light is brighter, it has to be further. If, if plants can only handle X light and your light is 2X, you have to back it away until it's X. There, it's, it doesn't, it's not my opinion. It's just math. If you give the plant too much light, you kill it. 
doesn't matter if it looks like a micronutrient problem like we talked about yesterday. If you give your plants too much light. Oh, anyway. Okay. So I had somebody else that was supposed to call. Let's see. Um, okay. So this is another, this is, this is, uh, this is another one of those comments that I like. Okay. Now, what I tell you is this is a statistical probability, right? Growing dope is a statistical, growing cannabis is a statistical probability. The, the, the greater the things you do on the trajectory of success, the greater the chance of success. The difference between experimenting and experience. Experimenting is what you do on your way to failure. Experience is what you earn on your way to success. So here's the geekazoid who is going to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Dude, the blowout on ducting is very rare, less than 1%. And if that's a big, and if, and that's a big if, I does blow out, it does blow out your plants can recover if you get to them. Okay. Is getting to them in time a very big if too? Uh, what I'm suggesting is, is that, is that statistically, um, one of the observations I always make to you guys is the number one problem that's going to kill your plants halfway through flower is duct failure. That's why thermal flow ducting. That's why thermal flow ducting is so is is so important. Like specifically, this one brand, because. He says it's less than 1%, and I'm sure he is absolutely sure that it is 1% because, um, well, you know, I mean, I'm sure he's just some guy in a store who answers as many questions as I do. So he's going to pick a number. So, you know, we can all pick numbers. What I'm suggesting is this. I'm not even going to pick a number. This is 25 feet of thermoflow ducting. It is three ply, black on the inside, fire resistant, blowout proof because the middle layer sandwiched between those metal rings is threads. It's this mesh, like um, uh, like something they'd put on like a like a ruptured like a rupt, you know, like a um, an aneurysm to hold it down. You know what I mean? A ballooning aneurysm. Like it's a mesh, right? So it keeps it from blowing out. So my question to you guys is this. A bottle of nutrients is 20 years old. If your nutrient is, if your bottle is more than a year old, do you want to risk 12 weeks and all the money you're spending on $20? Okay. So if you say no to nutrients, like, oh no, I would just buy another bottle of nutrients. Okay. Smart. Because what we're talking about here is nutrients over time can coagulate, right? They, they can bind, they can separate, temperatures change. Ah, they can fall out of the, you know what I mean? So we don't know. And it's 20 bucks. Now this is Thermoflow six inch ducting. I think it sells for like 37 bucks, something like that. The cheaper ducting sells for 21. So if you're not going to risk $20 on a bottle of nutrients, would you risk $16 on Thermoflow ducting? I mean, you're saving $16 right? And the, the ducting is going to last longer than the nutrients. So it, the number one failure mid flower, even on the first round, if you bought cheap ducting, and then the failure rate only goes up. Think about it like the lights, like HID lights, you use a thousand watt bulb, you lose 10% in the first year. If you had it outside in your yard, you would lose 10%, another 10% over the next five years. So you burn the bulb in and then over the next five years, it's the same as the first. I mean, you guys are buying bulbs after every third crop for that 10%. So you guys are buying LEDs because you're going, oh, the bulbs last 50,000 hours. If you factor in the cost of never having to buy another $100 Ushio, then, and here's, we're talking about $16 on ducting. And as the longer you use the ducting and the hotter it gets and the longer it gets, the failure rate, there is, I can predict the San Andreas will crack. We know it will. It'll slip. And it's going to tear the shit out of California. It'll slip. We know it's going to slip. Why? Because it slips. That's what it does. Ducting 
gets worn out. Your tires on your car get worn out. Thermoflow does not because it has the mesh. So $16 saved on Thermoflow versus none. And so now, not just that, this guy also says, um, and you can recover if you get to them. Dude, I'm telling you that you should be in your garden once a week. I can tell you, if you're a good grower, by definition, the actions of a good grower, one, you probably don't have ducting because you, you have an AC anyway. And two, good growers just leave them the fuck alone. There just ain't that much to be done. So the people that tend to be in there all the time might find it. But uh, if we're doing this, we're talking about 16 bucks here. Uh, what I'm saying is it's this type of attitude that defines the type of customer that comes into my store. And I find that when you're very rigid, you're going to do what you want to do and that shit just kills your plants because that's the type of behavior that kills your plants in the type of person that doesn't stay on the trajectory of success that's why i don't look for more advertisers oh i knew i had thermoflow but i actually wanted you to see the ducting um that's why i, I don't look for more advertisers i have clonex clonex solution green pads Clonex Root Maximizer, Root Riot Trays, my Ultimate RO, the Mega Meter, Turbo Cloner. I mean, I got MPK. How many nutrients do I need to advertise? How many different types of soil do I need to advertise? I don't, because for the most part, it's all the same shit. So what I did was I approached the advertisers that have been doing this the longest and are the best. And I said, look, man, you know, you look at this Mondi. I mean, who, that's the Mondi 7-inch humidity dome. Are there copycats? Yes. They're all more expensive. This thing's like five bucks. Comes with two, two vents. Why are you, what technology, what do you think is going to change? How are you going to cure this any faster? Blam. Um... Um, let's see. All right. Queen Bee Wilds Water. Let's see. What am I? Um, oh, here we go. Phone call. Thanks. 417. Good morning. Good morning, girl boss. How are you today? I, I am feeling ornery. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I'm feeling ornery today. What can well, I do for great. you? I got a question on finishing up. You've helped me. I mean, Everything you've ever said and done, I've watched. I've talked to you a few times, and I'm doing awesome by following what I've learned from you. So I give you all the credit. But here's my issue. When we're going to flush, I'm an advanced nutrient guy. I'm, you may not want to hear that. But oh, no, they're great. Anyhow, they're great. I remember, uh, they're great. They're great. Yeah, you always – you vote. I'm sorry. You uh, always stressed that sulfur yes. was very important at the end. Yes, sir. And – I didn't realize, but in that final flush, there's magnesium and sulfur and a little bit of nitrogen. And I'm thinking, there's the element that I've been missing. And I started using that faithfully the last two weeks. And I'm thinking, is that all they need? What about my uh, microorganisms in there? Don't I need to feed them as I'm flushing to keep them eating at the roots? And that's my question. Like, where, you know, how does that all come together at the end? Is all you need to do is flush? I mean, don't they need anything else? Okay, so let's start about two weeks before you're going to harvest. First off, what do microbes do? Microbes use a small, use one unit of sugar that they take in the form of starch from the root. They take one unit of sugar from the root and they combine it with energy that they remove from an organic nutrient that they process from the media. They keep part of the nutrient for themselves and then they pass off the remainder to the plant now if the plant had to absorb that nutrient and convert it it would take the plant one and a half units of sugar 
So could the microbes stay on the root? Yeah, I suppose, but we're really not looking to take up any more nutrients. I mean, how much sulfur does she really need? So one, don't need to feed the microbes in the last two weeks. Two, removing all of the nutrients, the whole point of this is so your weed doesn't burn like a road flare. That's why you see the picture in this lower left corner next to the phone down there of the guy, fart man with the flare in his ass. Because when you use too many nutrients, your weed, right? It smells like ass and smokes like a road flare. I mean, it's just harsh. So what we're, what we're talking about here is mixing up some flush, running it through judiciously. And then whatever's left in there is left in there. She doesn't require much sulfur. I mean, if you look at CalMag, um, we're CalMag has like two or four ppm of iron. I mean, they don't need much micros. And the plants, well, frankly, the plant's about to die anyway. So what we're really talking about here is the plant doesn't care about the nutrients. The microbes have no use because the plant doesn't care about the nutrients. You don't want the nutrients, so you're going to do a flush. So who cares if the microbes die? You just really want to uh, get that sulfur in there. Starting at about week four flower, about halfway through flower, you're going to start adding a little bit of sulfur. Now, in terms of the flush, I mean, you could just use a flush and then just put, you know, 200 ppm of mag sulfur in there, or you could just flush with mag sulfur. I mean, it's, it's six of one, right, half a dozen right. of another. You just need to get a little bit in there. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, I'll, and I guess the main issue that I'm missing is, is like I learned from you and other people is we've spent all this time putting the nutrients into this plant and they're in those leaves so let them eat those leaves therefore they go yellow and they're eating itself in other words right all the nutrients it needs are there correct yes sir um in fact when in fact when we talk about this let's uh let's go back to um npk university and <clears throat> and again why are my leaves yellow and again no, Harley's super nice guy, super smart. All I'm talking about here is this yellow leaf condition where, where the leaves turn yellow. Um, do you know why these yellow leaves are falling off the tree in this image? I'll tell you why. They're used up, right? The They're N is used, used up. up. The N is used up. But that's uh. my point. A leaf actually is the store of the plant. And when Harley talks about um, the bottom sacrifice itself for the top, or you'll see something on the top right. first, what we're talking about with nutrients is this. <clears throat> there are micros, there are macros. Some nutrients are mobile, some nutrients are immobile. Micronutrients right. tend to be less mobile. Mag and cal, even though they are micros, are considered two of the macros, and they are more mobile. Now, nitrogen is definitely mobile. But if the leaves are the store of the nutrients, and these yellow leaves are falling, and leaves store NP. K, then what's in the remainder of those leaves? Yeah, I mean, everything they need is in the leaves, correct? Yes, sir. All right, so listen, I appreciate yeah. the call. Keep listening, all right? I appreciate the call. Um, so what we're talking about here is what happens when those leaves fall. If N is showing you, if a, if a deficiency in N in a healthy plant with the correct amount of light, no other causes, if you just didn't feed N, like you were feeding PK and no N, you're feeding PK and no N. So the leaves turn yellow. So what's in the leaf? If they're a store of nutrients, must be PK in the leaf. So what happens in this picture when the leaves fall? Well, when the leaves fall, they fall and they drop PK on the ground. Then the rains come, fall into winter, the leaves rot, they create ground cover which can be peat moss or you know whatever it is you know but they create ground cover and in that ground cover there's pk so as the fall comes and the rains come it's the end of the season the plants are finishing the leaves fall down and wash the pk into the ground for the buds to take up all I'm saying is the whole thing is related. There is, I mean, it's all a bunch of little life cycles inside bigger life cycles, inside the currents of the ocean, inside the currents of the atmosphere, inside the rotation of the earth.
inside the orbit of the sun, inside the arm of the galaxy, inside the galaxy in the universe. So all I'm saying is that all of these things are related in many different ways. And to just arbitrarily say that, that this is one way or, or another way, and just to, just to pick something and say it's so definitive, everything is related. Just because you go into a turn at 1500 RPM in second, a right-hand turn, doesn't mean you would go to 1500 on the next time because you might be up a hill or down a hill or or you may be coming to a red light. So it, the situation is fluid. And to just tell you, like when I watch these videos, it, when I watch these videos, it drives me bonkers because they don't give you the interaction. Yes, nitrogen causes leaves to turn yellow. Spider mites leave yellow spots and yellow dots. But they don't interpret it for you. And that's what makes you a grow boss like I'm a grow boss is that ability to interpret the information that you see and put it in context. That's what I do. All right. What are you guys talking about? John Doe, damn phone died. 24 inches. All right. So the numbers, uh, the numbers 84 grow boss. Let's, um, uh, dude, I have, oh, uh, uh. My back is feeling pretty good today. It's just been sort of sore down my legs. Um, um, overall pain seems to be lower. Um, I'm still heading for an MRI, um, but I'm hoping maybe it'll be like more in my legs and hips than my back. But let's see. All right. So that's just a quick update on me. Okay, so what do we got over there? The different stakes in the corner, the the thermal flow ducting, eights, and um, the four inch ducting. You can usually buy cheap four inch ducting because you don't usually hook four inch up to a hood, so it'd only be sucking air out of a tent. So four inch ducting doesn't always have to be quite so quite so brutal. Okay, let's see. I had some stuff I wanted to show you. Um, All right, check this out. Okay, so this is the room we got. Chuck hung that light up. I'll have another light up there in a sec, but check out the room, right? I mean, I got my little res right there. So this is literally like a room right out of my uh, grow book. Ultimate RO, a temp dehumidifier in there, um, an, an uh, emergency hot shutdown, you know, a hot, a hot temp shutdown for your light cool little moving fan right here oscillating fan you know dual duct ac you can see both of those dual ducts going up and out a co2 monitor a a, a light controller you know we got a ballast up there but i you know co2 tank right there check it out fan filter and i got these uh japanese maples and you know we'll, we haven't finished potting them yet but i'm gonna put a trellis in here and when I was telling you guys the other day, oh, there's the emergency exhaust fan up there too. And I was telling you guys the other day when, uh, that I needed more scenes for my store so I could show you guys, yeah, I'm totally going to put a trellis in there so you guys can see what the canopy looks like. We're going to do some of the same stuff over here. And then I'm going to hang a Daystar hood up in that space too. Dude, Daystar is the smallest fucking hood. I have no idea why it's the most expensive hood on the market. This room over here, we're going to do a little more to it after we get that room finished. But yeah, that's, uh, we're going to put some, we're going to put some lights up. We're going to put some lights up, uh, clean up the ceiling here. Oh, hang on, sorry. Dude. Oh, man. I lost the camera. Okay. Give me one sec. I got the camera hooked on a chair, so I lost the camera. All right. So we've got some stuff going on back there. Um, the vendors, 
I trade him for represent, representation in the, uh, in the back. So that works for me on the back end. But this time I'm building it out. And, you know, we're talking about Project Grow House. So I'm still kind of working on Project Grow Store. But I really like the idea. I'm going to take some of those Japanese maples and I'm going to make like a Clonex, a Clonex cloning tray where we can literally go over taking clones real quick. Oh, shit. My battery's going to die. And we can literally go over taking clones real quick in the back. Like, you know, we got a clone question or a curing question, something like that. It's, uh, yeah. So we're building the set in the back for the examples. Oh, no. Just one double A motherfucker. Huh, I wonder if I'm about to, uh, uh, yeah, awesome. Let's see what this is. Two double A's. Okay. Cause I am so good at doing this now. Nine one six, hang on a sec. Check, check, check. Nine one six, hang on one sec for me. All right. Yeah. Good morning, nine one six. What can I do for you? Hey, good morning, bro boss. How you doing? I am. I'm feeling much better today. I I, I feel like it's less in my back, and more like I like I tore nerve clusters in my hips than it is in my lower back. So I'm hoping maybe my back is feeling a little better. I'm hoping. We'll see. Thank you. All right, what can I do for you? Caller, caller. Check, check. Caller. Caller, caller. Caller, caller. Hang on, audio setting. Grow boss. Um, Hey, caller, caller. Okay, perfect. Hey, caller. Bus, how you doing? Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear okay. you now. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, good morning. Hey, good morning. So, uh, you know, this is Frank Chan, and I got a question about uh, uh, my plants. You know, I was gifted three clones. Two of them are not doing too well. I killed one of them, but one is thriving. And... Uh, I'm, I topped it, and I'm about to do some kind of uh, other technique, either uh, LST or, or the scrog. And I was wondering, which one do you recommend? Um, okay, first off, first off, you had three plants. Uh, two didn't do so well. You killed one, and then the fourth one is doing good. So one of the three plants is doing good. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, this is my first time at it. Okay. Um, you, can't, you can't ask me what's the best without telling me what you want. That's like the whole point of this show is if you want to fast veg, top it and flower it. If you want to grow it as large as possible, then clearly you're not going to LST it. If you have a wide hood, you would put it in a scrog. If you... There are so many... There are so many, there are, there's no one way. Like, uh, well, for instance, how long are you going to veg her for? Four weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks? About uh, four to six weeks. And then I have a four by four with a 400 watt HPS. Okay. So how much light are you vegging with? The uh, 400 watt with the metal highlight. <sighs> But if 400 watt is your finishing light, how can you start with 400 watts? Let me show you a picture. Are you watching the show too? No, I had to get off my phone to call you. <clears throat> okay. So. This is, this is four weeks on the plant. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, see, I keep forgetting. Oh, anyway, okay, so this is a this is the end of week three in this picture. This picture okay. is this picture is week four. So you have one plant. This is as big as you can grow it because you're going to have to watch this in a sec to understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, all I'm going to do, in fact, I appreciate the call. Um, go back to watching it because I've got your answer for you. Okay. So this is a 300-watt light. There are five plants underneath it. See, if you have a 300 watts worth of light, you can grow 300 watts worth of plant. I don't care if you grow one 300-watt plant, 250-watt plants, three 100-watt plants, or five 60-watt plants. I don't care how many plants you grow. I mean, you could do, like the other, you know, you could do 10 30-watt plants. You could do 100 3-watt plants. All I'm saying is 300 watts worth of light grows 300 watts worth of plants. There is no magic about this. Now, the fewer the plants, the bigger they are, the fewer you need, the longer the veg. So if you're going to do a four-week veg, then this is four weeks. But see, this is 300 watts with five plants. See, at the end of four weeks veg, you're going to have one plant that's 60 watts big. You have a 400 watt light. Who cares MH or HPS? You have a 400 watt light and you have a 60 watt plant. But more importantly, if you have a 400 watt light in, and you have a 10 watt plant in week one, why do you have a 400 watt light in veg? You would have to throw 390 watts at the floor. And I show you guys what throwing 390 watts at the floor looks like in in the pictures like uh I got the pictures for you. I got the pictures. Um nope, not that. Um no, that's not right. Uh ah, this guy. <laughs> Hydroponics. Yes, I do. I got the little ones for a dollar, and the big ones, I think, are like five bucks. But if you buy a bunch of them, I do them for four. Yes. They, yeah, I mean, it just keeps the humidity so your bud doesn't get too humid or get too dry, which is, I mean, if you're going to open and smoke out of the jar, it sort of defeats the purpose. But if you're going to put it away as part of the cure, the humidipac's a smart move. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll put them in jars. Dude, I got some cheap jars for you, too. Yeah. They dry really fast here in Vegas. Then you put them in the jars, then when they, right, and then you start to burp them. So generally what you guys do is you put like the lower humidity pack and that keeps them, it helps them dry out. And then it depends on, I mean, they're 62 and 55%. It's not that big a part. The 55%, um, it's, it's, some people like to leave that for long-term storage, but the 62%, sometimes it smokes a little slower, so it burns a little slower. But yeah, I got the humidity packs. Dude, I got, yeah, it depends on what you want to do. But I'm on the middle of my webcast right now. So if you got any more questions, you got to come in. Yes, sir. All right, bye. Um, always the same questions. So this is what a 20-watt plant looks like under 400 watts worth of light. I mean, you have to throw 380 watts at the floor. What are you going to do? Move this light closer? I mean, that's pretty brutal, right? So I just want to point out, that this is like shifting gears. And if you start in sixth gear, how do you finish in six? How do you start with a 400 and finish with a 400 if the plant gets bigger? Seems to me like it's another grower that's, that's not accounting for all the components that have to go into a, a successful grow. It's very, 
um, you get very focused on an idea or you micro focus on something. And as soon as you micro focus, you see the forest for a tree and you don't understand what the situation is and you can't apply basic logic. Um, okay. That was that color. All right, it's 1030. Ooh, I really hate this one. Ah, it creaks. It's got the little metal thing here. It's noisy. Mm, oh, I know what I was supposed to talk about. Um, so, oh, and Green Tom, that is pretty cool with the UVA, UVB. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to download this into his... I'm going to download this right now into... Oh. 559. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Um, I had a quick question. Uh, it's my first time growing, and I needed to find out what is the best way to cure it. Gah! Okay. Why is this? Okay. So, oh, I see. This screen is... I see what's happening. Okay. Um, the best way to cure it is to just sort of hang it, let it dry for a few days, and then just put it in a jar and burp it with the little uh, with the little pads. I'll tell you what the best thing to not do is don't make this uh, don't make this a, a bigger deal than it is because if you didn't grow it right, you can't turn it into something that it's not. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So did they you came out pretty nice. They have some um, red hairs on it. It came out pretty good. Smells okay. great. Um, congratulations. Um, Thank you. Uh, yes. All you're really going to do here is there's three parts of there is. Okay, hang on a sec. F2, thumb, three. Okay, the, the thing about curing is there's two parts. There's drying it. And then there's ripening it. And I, oh, little kids. And I always talk about this difference because it's really important. If you think about it like a tomato coming over here from Mexico, <coughs> they don't pick them ripe or they would continue to ripen on the way over here before, and they would squish. So they pick them such that they ripen during transport. Curing oh. is the, is the, there's drying and there's curing. You dry them in an effort to decrease the humidity such that the buds tighten and they don't rot. Like imagine taking like a wet leaf for a wet leaf from the tree and putting it in a scrapbook. It would mold up and rot. That's why they hang them to dry and then they preserve that. <clears throat> you have to do to some extent the same thing. You are going to dry the flower. Now, there's three parts of moisture in the flower. There's moisture extracellular, just like people. There's moisture in the vascular structure. And there's moisture in the stems and stalks. So depending on how you trimmed, whether you knocked off all the nugs or you have them hung up down on branches, there's a difference in dry time. Usually what happens, though, is the extracellular moisture dries off fairly quickly. Then you would take the bud. And that's when it starts to get crunchy. So let's say you put a whole bunch of bud in a paper bag. Forget one pound, two pounds, however much it is. In 48 hours, and 24 hours, that bud will be wet again. Where did the moisture come from? The intracellular moisture moved into the extracellular space that just evaporated. So you hang them up, again, depending on how much you have and depending on how you trim, you might now, the first time, like the Bushmaster, um, I will show you something. This is all. Uh, this is all just relative um, in terms of. There is no right answer, but here for the Bushmaster, when when he's when he's doing this, he the first round. And again, there's not necessarily a right answer. All we're talking about is a relationship and time to when we're doing things. Okay. So in some cases, the buds were trimmed into stalks, but not every bud stays nicely on a stalk. So here, 
even for the first round of drawing, the Bushmaster has some on the rack and some, uh, some hanging from a chain. So what was the difference? Well, you can get a lot more hanging on those chains than you can on the rack. Now, they, they dry up over a few days, and then you close the door so the humidity increases, and the, extra, the intracellular moisture then the vascular space moves into the extracellular space, and the moisture that's in the stems and stalks on the plants that are hanging would then move into the extracellular space too. But there are no stems and stalks really over here on the racks because these are just buds. There's no stems and stalks. So just based on the different ways that you hang them and based on the different material in the tops or the bottoms or the size of the bud, all of those come into a factor on how long it takes to dry. Like anything else, there are, all right, listen, finish. I'm gonna finish up with this call. Keep listening, thanks for the call. But there are many factors that go into how long it's going to dry for. And so not everything is going to dry at the same time. I mean, just again, here's an example of one harvest and all the buds didn't come off the plant the same. All I encourage you guys to do is to just understand that there is no formula. There's an ideas and there's implementation of those ideas, but how the fuck can the vendors know? You know what I mean? Those chains came from Ikea. They don't tell you how long to hang your bud from the chain from Ikea. There has to be a, a little bit of logic that comes in. You know what I mean? Like, you guys got to help me a little bit here. Okay, let me open up another picture. <coughs> I want to show you uh, this one here. Okay. Let's see. Um, this one. Okay, so this just this comes in from... Um, Tom, and now we're talking UVA, UVB lights, like we were saying earlier. Is it worth something? I don't know, man. Uh, let me, let's take another, I don't know. Let's take a look at this picture. Um, I would have to say, let's see if we just, uh, if we just move this picture up like this, would you say those are different buds? I mean, that's a lot of UVA, UVB. I mean, you would just say LED. I mean, you wouldn't. I mean, for all I know, they're a light emitting diode anyway. I mean, UVA and UVB could be light emitting diodes anyway. But, like, I'm not seeing anything that, that's telling me, you know, abra, abra, cadabra. I'm going to reach out and grab you. I would like to say that, that the top looks pretty bushy. And yet there appears to be two plants here and one plant here. I would like to suggest that this grower did, however, understand about plant count. Because he needed one plant to, oh, you can't see me pointing. Duh. He needed one plant to fill up this space. He needed one plant to, to fill up this space. And he needed two over here. So here's a guy who understands that you got to rev a four cylinder a little higher than an eight. See my point? So again, interpretation. So here's UVA, UVB. It looks like, I think that's the blue and the white we see up here. Yeah, I don't, I mean, you know, I mean, you take the light out of the picture and you got to ask yourself, uh, 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 uh. I like the idea that we can track it and we can keep watching it. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear what he's going to say about, uh, about the bud when it's done. Because what are we talking about here? You can increase, increase what? THC, CBD. Who cares? You want to increase CBD? Hempgenics. Boom, right here. Hempgenics. They've got it for you right there. There's increased CBD in a pain rub. It works work great. You know, hempgenics. There you go, CBDs. They can ship them through the mail because there's no THC. So I don't know what you're going to try to, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, if you want a higher percentage, grow some plants and or buy it like this you know like 
I think the best results you're going to get would be that you buy a CBD strain. Dude, I am out of bud. <laughs> that was my last bowl. Like I'm smoking it on top of ash like a crackhead. Oh, dog hair. Bah, probably shouldn't have made that crackhead joke. <laughs> oh, I thought that was... Bah, that was wax. I'm not really a wax fan. But, but you guys probably know that. Oh, yeah, a little CBD on there. So this is the Hempgenic CBD. I haven't actually tried it before, smoking it like this. This is the first time. I'm coming up on the end of the steroid pack. I can't use another steroid pack because they're so brutal. Um, my back feels better, but my legs are still hurting. Um, I did take one-eighth of a Vike today, one Tramadol, um, Oatmeal cookies that I made, no sugar, and uh, 600 milligrams of Motrin. So I'm doing pretty good for this show. Um, I'm going to lay down after this. Chuck's coming in today. Fuck. Ah, I love snow capping bowls. Ah, 20 years ago, it's Coke. Now it's CBD. <laughs> So, one of my plans, so someone had a comment I was talking earlier about. One of the comments was from uh, Greg R. And, and it's not, um, uh, I mean, it's a, you know, it's got a little bit of the, you know better than me to it. I mean, it's based on at least reasonable logic, but here's Greg R. <clears throat> with the claim, oh, I think I like the CBD on there. A grow boss, nope, not that one. Risky move grow boss, taking it pay per view is going to cost you a lot of eyeballs. Good luck with it. But you didn't define the eyeballs, Greg. <clears throat> so, yes, I'm going to post up live shows. I'm going to keep advertising on the grow boss channel on live shows. And so it would seem like maybe, right? But the, the thing is, Greg. My business model isn't based on the same eyeballs. I mean, most people on the channel, let's see, what do we got today? Like in terms of statistics, how am I doing today? 177. Um, yeah, I've been, it's overtime for Chuck Chuck, it is. I've been, I don't think I like smoking CBD. <clears throat> Nutrients don't matter. Say it. One more time, baby. Nutrients don't matter. I double dare you. I didn't say they don't matter. I said all nutrients are the same, and switching only yields three results. Better, the same, or worse. I said all nutrients are based on the same element, right? Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. I mean, GH makes Botanicare and GH, right? I mean, they make the two number one selling brands and all the all the land is owned by the same company. You think they buy? I mean, isn't that the whole point of Office Depot and Office Max combining? So they don't have to, you know what I mean? So they can buy more of the same to distribute? I mean, wasn't that, isn't that efficiency? So we know it's got to be the same shit. Oh, you know what? Um, so... Well, wow, CBD really threw me for a loop. Okay. So I was talking about so my business model. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to get a better upload speed. We'll switch out from where we're at to a, from where we're at, Cox, over to, or we'll switch over to Cox, which will get us 25 meg upload. I'll be able to do this in 720. We'll be able to host other things inside the store with a better upload and quality. <clears throat> I've got those rooms going on in the back. Um, I'll be able to do more showtime 
like this, and we'll be able to set it, you know, take it to a new level. I'll be able to bring in some talent. It'll be a subscription-based thing. We can pay somebody to come in here and test a bunch of products for us. So I really like the idea of testing those products. I really like the idea of setting up examples of how we can, uh, uh, like those rooms back there look just like the rooms in the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. They look just like the rooms that, you know, I'm just building my own tools for this. All right. Shelf behind them. Yeah, nutrient companies don't matter. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, for the, I, you know, I see some new people on here. Um, you know, I'm running commercials for the webcast. I run commercials for the store. I noticed yesterday we set a record for how many viewers. Today I'm a little below average for a Sunday. Sundays are usually more than Saturdays. And so I'm able to track these things. I'm able to see where they're going and what keywords um, come in. What's Ron? Oh. Um. Yeah, bring in some talent. I know I've got growers that, I know I've got customers that would come in here, you know, once a week and <clears throat> do projects through my store where they run them and I can just show up and report on them live like this. You know, the thing that I ran into was, you know, those videos that I made, dude, those were, takes months and months to script them. Like those venting videos, I mean, there were 300 scenes I shot over five weeks. It was huge. It was a huge ordeal. It took me six months of my life. So everything's, you know, if it wasn't for the back pain and stuff right now, you know, everything's, you know, sort of coming together. Um, I have to take some time off for the back pain. But even then, you know, we're doing podcasts. Uh, we're going to be on Spotify and iTunes. We got CD Baby. We're, we're taking all the shows like this and we're putting them on the podcasts so you guys can listen to them. Because a lot of stuff... If you've seen the show, sometimes you just want to hear it again. I mean, that's how I listen to stuff, too. So I'm going to take the material and... Uh, <laughs> uh, you can hang out with Rusty and the Grow Boss. That's very funny. Mm. Thomas, good afternoon, as always. Shout out to Ralph. I don't even know where the dog is. Probably out back or something. Um, yeah. So that's where things stand. Um, I'm expanding. You know, I mean, I've been relaxing, but I'm still building the back of the store. There's nothing I can do until I go for an MRI. Even if I feel better, I have to go for an MRI. So, yeah, i got to do it like that. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a knee on LED. That's super funny. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We need the next one of the Bushmaster, I know. Listen, I'm totally, I'm, I'm trying to produce it. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, my, my work time has been reduced by 70% because of my back. Um, yes. LED, LED lights matter. LED lights matter. Yeah, I hate, you may get a little audio distortion. I like this one. Oh, deals. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Deals. Yes. It's, uh, yes. I've got... Fuck, I should have started with that. Yeah, I'm like supposed to tell you guys, like the videos, subscribe to the channel, check out the stuff in the back. Don't forget, you want to pay me for better content. I'm going to go buck wild and I'm going to pay, for, I'm going to pay people to produce content for me. I mean, if you guys don't want to produce it and put it on a channel with me, fuck, I'm going to pay people to produce content for me. Okay. Wandercam... Okay, Wondercam is back on, so deals. Fuck, I got distracted. Check, check. Okay, mic's on. All right. Um, okay. See that big hood up there? If you mention this video, you can have super size hoods, brand new, in a box. Well, the box is wet, so you don't want it. But you can have brand new hoods like that in a box. If you buy two... $75 each. Raptor hoods, brand new, in glass, $75 each. If you want a 16 bulb T5s with the bulbs, plug in the wall. I think there's four switches on them. Uh, dude, those things are supposed to be 450. Dude, you can have them three. 
20 cash, and there's only two of them. Okay, I got of two foot 16 bulbs. Dude, those things are probably like $300 on eBay. You can have them 200 bucks each. Um, okay, so I had a guy come in yesterday who I have a six bulb five. Okay, so I'll tell you the story of a guy who came in yesterday. Nice guy. That's a six bulb T5 that I got right here. Boom. 300 watts. And I sh I'll show you what that can grow. And he brought me an eight bulb two footer. And he brought in an eight bulb two footer. Okay, so I got the two footer eight bulb and the four foot six bulb yesterday. And he comes in and he wants 600 watts worth of LED light. Okay, so he, he knew what he wanted, so I wasn't going to talk him out of it. So basically it came down to the price of the light versus what I was willing to give him on a trade. Now, if you wanted cash for those lights, I would have bought them for 25 each because I sell those eight bulbs, you know what I mean? And I get, them, I get a six bulb new in a box pretty cheap. So it's not, you know what I mean? So it's just, they're not, those two are low value. The same way I've got those two, those two foot 16 bulbs in the back. You know what? I, you know what? Let's do this. Two foot 16 bulbs. So I got, I got all that 16 bulb. So he took a Mars four panel, which is $350 MSRP for 270. Um, two foot 16 bulb T5 light. Okay. Um, two bulb, um, let's see, hydro, let's add hydro to it. Okay. Um, four foot, eight bulb, 160. Um, two foot, two foot T5 light. Let's try this. Okay, the four panel is 296. So he called later complaining about the four panel was 296 and I charged him 350. You know what I mean? And his complaint was like, he didn't know how much the light was when he left. I think that was actually his complaint. But he was saying that he could have bought it for three online. I was like, yeah, but you didn't know which one to buy. I mean, you came to the store. So, you know, I'm like, I sold it to him for 270, but I know, I mean, so I, I took stuff in trade, but I mean, you got to know what you want. And I, frankly, I, I wouldn't even try growing with an LED. I mean, nice guy, but you guys know what T5 light, um, hydroponic, I mean, you got to know what you want, but isn't that in anything? If you just walk onto a car lot, aren't they going to sell you some shit? I mean, isn't that what their job is? Two foot, four lamps, 60 bucks, but that's not really a fixture. Four foot twelve bulbs. Ta. Anyway, those two foot things are those two foot bulbs are pricey. I mean that thing's probably it's in a it's in the high output brown case. So that thing's probably like a hundred and six two hundred bucks or something. So I gave him eighty store credit instead of fifty cash. I mean it would have worked out the same for him either way, because I would have bought I wouldn't have given him cash for that. So um, I got those two lights. I mean, you guys can have these things for, let's see which one. Let's, uh, let's see which one it is. You guys can have, you guys can have, let's see, I got them for 40 bucks each, but I had to buy both of them. Okay. So you can have the two foot eight bulb for 75 bucks while it's long as it's here. And you can have this four foot six bulb for a hundred bucks for as long as I got it here. Four foot six bulb, hundred bucks. Two foot eight bulb, um, sixty bucks. So I say I didn't say sixty bucks. I think I said seven. Yeah, sixty bucks. I don't even care. I've got oh, this is, you know, those ones I have in the box. Okay, so that one right there, that's that one behind it, is a sixteen bulb. And what they do is it's the same size as the eight bulb. They put two bulbs per bank. So that one has two bulbs per bank, and this one has one bulb per bank. That's really the difference. In the, I mean, other than that one's, of course, twice as bright. Yeah, you know what? You can have those. 
I got them new in a box, 200 bucks, 16 bulbs. Dude, that would fit nice in a three by three tent. Shit, that probably fit in one of those two by twos. That's probably pretty good. So help me get those out of the store. Oh, it's Dozer. Dozer. And Ralph. Uh, what's up, big dog? As just like the second best dog in the world. Ah, oh, look at those two. Yeah. Look at those two dogs. Ah, oh, yeah. I got like the smallest store in all the land, and I still have just enough room for two dog beds. Can a customer trip? Yeah, I suppose. But I've got two dogs in my store. All right. So I've got that equipment. I've got LEDs. I've got super size hoods. Oh, we got a shitload of ballast. You want magnetic ballast? Dude, 50 bucks. 600 watt, 50 bucks. I'll even give you a small hood, bulb, and a ballast. I mean, 600 watt bulb, 600 watt hood, 600 watt ballast. 100 bucks. 90 bucks. It's going to be a small hood. It won't be a super size hood. But that little air pump came in. Dude, you can have that thing for 40 bucks. I got digital 600 watts you can have for 60 bucks. There's a couple of those next gen ones. Dude, those things just last forever. Oh, there's an eight light controller, but I'm probably going to keep that for the room in the back. Um, yeah. Oh. Whoa. Okay. That was pretty sweet. I almost just tripped and fell. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Um, yeah. So the room in the back is coming along. Look up there. Say hi. Dutch Dozy. I know you're a good dog. So the room in the back is coming along pretty good. Oh, am I petting the other dog? Oh, you better come here and get some too. Come here. You get, come here. You get some of this. Come here. Everybody come here. Oh, you guys are so good. I know. I know. I know you guys are so good. Look at that. Look at that dog. Look at that dog. <laughs> All right, so it's 11 o'clock. Let's see, what do we got going on? Uh, um, where did I lose? Where is my live? This is still on. Dog's ready to toke up. Yeah. Oh, dude, Chuck. Yeah, Chuck has groupies. It is amazing. It's super funny. People come here asking for Chuck. It's funny watching when people come in and Chuck's here and they're asking for him. Um, in my store, how many bottles are older than one year? I don't think I have any. If you buy a case, they're like a dollar fifty cheaper than if you buy them individually. But because I have like two different brands, I only buy them two at a time. Otherwise, I try to get you guys on the powder or the liquid. I just don't stock that. I, I try to stock them thinner. That's what I use my distributor for. Like CalMag, you know what I mean? I, I, you almost have to buy it by the pallet. In all the land, the number one selling bottle in all the land is always CalMag. There are Cali Magic and Cal Magic and Magic Cal, and there's all sorts of stuff. But the highest ratio of mag is that CalMag, because even though there may be more mag in some of the other products, there's way more Cal thereby diluting the percentage of mag again. Oh. Okay, audio bad. All right, that's just got that. Yeah. Mike failing cat. You guys are right on top of me. Um thank you. All right, so I've got new headsets coming in. My back's hurt too bad to set the whole thing up. But anyway, it's 11 o'clock. I, I, 
I, I, I appreciate it. I think my day is over. I'm going to go back to relaxing. It's Sunday. You know, you guys should all have a great Sunday. Take it easy. Um, go check on your plants right now. And then don't look again until Thursday. And that's how you know your garden is doing. I'll get a uh, grow boss. Name of the store is Henderson Hydro. Um, yes. I'm from South Africa. We wish we had guys in stores like you over there. I have a T5 480. Ah, I bet you wish you had stores. You don't need more guys like me. Just uh, more stores. Okay, but I am going to end the show. I do appreciate everything. Thank you so much.